Amen and amen. So our topic for today is victory. And, you know, many of us, including the speaker, we are believing God for more and more victories. There is nobody that does not need victory. If you are satisfied now, trust me, you need to come up later where you need victory because um, victory is part of our heritage. Victory is part of who we are as individuals. As Christians, our hallmark is the hallmark of victory. I mean, our older brother or our oldest brother, Jesus, when he was on earth, experienced one of the greatest victories that the world has ever had. Where he came in, he went to hell, defeated and took the key and, and came back up. And, and we have the life of Christ. That's, he defeated death. That's what Jesus did. So if Jesus can experience victories, we can also experience multiple victories. And I pray that in tonight's meeting, that you will experience, you will be imparted with victories in Jesus' name. Amen. So what is victory? What is victory? It's a name, definitely. That people, their name is victory. Or victory, if you want to use Nigerian slang, victory. So what is victory? And because of time, I'm, I will just call names. So if you can put it on the chat, that would be awesome. But what is victory? How will you define victory? How will you define it? I don't know, I can't see the chat now, but how will you define victory? Okay, um, Sister Tammy, Tekubo, I mean, I think that's part of your name. How will you, how will you define victory? <laughs> I was going to call you names. Sister Tammy, are you there? Okay. Uh, yes, I am. I'm here. Go ahead. I mean, I know there are, two, there are other teams on the call too. <laughs> um, victory, uh, how would I define victory? Victory is simply, in simple terms, it's winning. It's like you win. It's like, mm-hmm. that's the clearest way I can define it, is like mm-hmm. you won. That's what yes. I, w- I would describe victory as. Yes, victory is winning. Victory is winning. You have won. You Winning a battle, that's victory. For those that like football or basketball, you watch a match and you see people playing and the goal is for the team to score or to have more points than the other team so that they can have the victory. So that is victory. So in, I looked at the Oxford Dictionary online and it says victory is an act of defeating an enemy or opponent in a battle game or other competition. That's victory. Defeating an enemy, a country goes to war with another country and the goal of that country is to have victory over their opponent, over their enemy. So that is victory. Now, when I was not thinking about it in the spiritual aspect, victory is overcoming adversity, setback, loss, and defeat. Job, Job had more at the end of his life than in the beginning. You know, Bible says greater is the end of a thing. So Job overcame adversity. He overcame setback. He overcame loss, loss of children, loss of property, loss of finances. He overcame defeat. So victory is overcoming adversity. And we have all faced adversity one way or the other. Is overcoming setback. Is overcoming a loss and defeat. That's victory. Victory is winning a game or match. That's victory. You know when you during the World Cup or during the, if your team if your your club scores and your club is winning, you are very happy and excited. You know, like you are being paid. You know, that's what victory feels like. You are excited, like you are part of them. Like they have been paying you salary. Not knowing that you are just a fan. <laughs> Miguel Paul's interesting. Victory is winning a game or a match. Victory is deliverance. Obadiah 117. He said, Upon Mosiah shall be holiness, and the house, you can put your name, of Victor shall possess their possessions. You know, let's look at it. Can somebody post it on the chat if you can? First, um, Obadiah 117. Let's put our eyes on it. So I'm not just quoting it. Because he said, Upon Mosiah shall be oh, deliverance, and it shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. Obadiah 1, 17. You know, so if you look at that, you see there that it pertains and it's pertaining to victory. One second, I'm almost there. I'm reading the old version of the Bible. Obadiah 1, 17 says, it says, but upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness. And the house of Victor Washington shall possess their possessions. May that be our portion in Jesus' name. So victory is deliverance. It's deliverance from the, from, from the enemy. Victory is deliverance. Now, victory is also living in the overflow. Victory is living in the overflow. 
Look at the book of Psalm 23. It says, my cup runneth over. Victory is living in the overflow. Deuteronomy chapter 28, he says you shall overflow in prosperity. You overflow in prosperity. You know, in the fruit of your body, you know, that is victory. Victory is living in the overflow. And of course, 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says, but thanks be to God, which giveth us what? The victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus attained the highest form of victory. He overcame death. He overcame lack. He overcame poverty. And he took that thing, which was a setback in our lives, and gave us the victory. So he said, but thanks be to God, which gives us the victory. I pray over everybody here. From now on, you will begin to experience multiple victories in Jesus' name. There are many people here that have had setback. You have had disappointment. You have been hearing people tes testify, and you have not gotten any testimony yet. I decree in the name of Jesus that from now on, you begin to testify. From now on, your testimony will announce itself in Jesus' name. Amen. I was at a program last week, a big program. And there are some testimonies that came out to give testimonies that before they spoke, the testimony was already speaking. Okay, you see a woman with four children. What does that say to you? Before she starts speaking, you know that she has quadruplets. <laughs> or you see a woman with three, three boys or three girls. Before she even says, ah, by the way, thank God that I have the testimony is already there. So from now on, the evidence of your testimony will speak before you open your mouth in Jesus' name. Say amen. The evidence of your testimony will speak before you open your mouth. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God always wants us to walk and then fly in victory. See, there's a difference between walking and flying. If I want to go from here, I don't know, let me, I, okay, I'm in Georgia now. I can't give, for those that live in Georgia, if I want to walk from, Lawrenceville, Georgia to Atlanta. That, we, that, that can take me, it can take me a whole day. But if I'm flying from, 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 from Atlanta to New York, man, that's quick. God is saying to you and me that God wants us to move on from the realm of walking to the realm of flying. So you can fly in what? Victory. Actually, the topic I wanted to put for tonight is flying in victory. But I say that some of you don't understand. So I don't put there as victory. Flying in what? victory god wants us to enter into the realm of flight i don't know about you but i love airplanes i i love airplanes i do because it's the fastest means of transport in the world today is the fastest god wants us to enter into the realm of flight may god take us to the realm of flight in jesus name say loud amen amen and amen so there are different stages of victory you have the walking stage we have the running stage and we have the flying stage. We have a place where we are flying. From now on, we fly in victory in Jesus' name. God has put us in the realm of flight. You remember, I think it's First Kings 30 or so, please forgive me, when Elijah prayed to God to counsel the famine in the land. And of course, the servant saw like a hand in the cloud. And Elijah went and told Ahab, start going to to your place, to your palace, because it's about to rain. And somehow, God did it in such a way that on chariots, <laughs> Elijah outran the chariot of Ahab. God is saying to you and me that this is your realm of speed. You will begin to enjoy speed in Jesus' name. Say loud, amen. From now on, you enjoy speed. When people see you and see your bank account, they will not believe that it's your age. Say amen. <laughs> Some years ago, some years ago, I don't know, maybe pre COVID, maybe 2019, I don't know, 2020, I don't remember. And I was watching a program and they were, they were asked us to sow a seed. So I went to the bank. I went to the bank. Like, let me just withdraw the money because I don't know what was happening. I couldn't transfer the money. So I went to the bank and I won't lie to you. There was this Indian woman that was on the counter. So I told her I want to withdraw this amount of money. I was going to sow a seed, if I remember clearly. So she said, okay, okay, okay. So when I gave her the amount, she now, of course, she went on the computer and checked the balance. She now looked at me. <laughs> she said, what do you do? <laughs> she said, what, what do you do? What do you do? God will put you in a realm of speed in Jesus' name. Where your anointing, where your account balance, where your life, it's not reflect your age. You'll be 25 and be having mansions in Jesus' name. Say amen. 
you'll be 29, 30 and be reflecting the glory of God in the name of Jesus. God is going to put us in a realm where your age will not reflect your accomplishments in Jesus' name. I would say a child shall lead them. So in general, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen here, that God can put something on you that will make you great. I'm reading the book of First Chronicles. You see kings at eight years old. Josiah, Joash, kings at 12 years old. If 12-year-old people can rule a kingdom, if 8-year-old people can rule a kingdom, God can make you who is times 2 times 3 of their age accomplish great and mighty things in Jesus' name. Say loud, amen. From now on, your bank account will receive life in Jesus' name. Amen. Your bank account, I'm praying down for myself too. Our bank account will receive victories in the name of Jesus. And our bank account will enter into the realm of speed and overflow in Jesus' name. Our bank account will enter, say, say it to your mouth, say, Father, my bank account will enter into the realm of speed and enter into the realm of overflow in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Let's continue because of time. There are different stages. The walking stage, there's nothing wrong with walking, but running is better than walking. Flying is better than running. May God help us to fly in Jesus' name. Amen. You can experience victory in many ways. Maritally, you can experience victory. Maritally, look at um, Ruth, I mean, her husband died. She had nowhere to go. And a, a man cello, is a, a grand pan cello, I don't know how to say it. A man that has been so advanced as a single man. <laughs> Married her. I mean, God can do it for you such a way that all the years you have waited, by the time God will bring your spouse, ladies and gentlemen, it will blow your mind in Jesus' name. By the time God will compensate you with that spouse that is bringing your way, may it blow, may it be out of this world in Jesus' name. Ephesians 3.20 says, Unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we ask or think. May that be our portion maritally in Jesus' name. For those here that are trusting God to get married and settle down, may you encounter, may you collide with that person that you should marry. And that person will blow your mind and that person will be more than you expect by the grace of God in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So God can give you victory maritally. For those that are married, that are going through problems in their marriage, may you overcome in the name of Jesus. God can help you overcome. For those that are in a relationship, and that relationship is not working out the way it should, God can help you to overcome. Either for you to stay with the person or, or break up with that person, God will give you direction in Jesus' name. So you can overcome maritally. I decree and declare that in this meeting where we are, in this group, we will celebrate multiple marriages this year and next year in the name of Jesus. Multiple marriages this year and next year in the name of Jesus. All over the world. In Jesus' name. Amen. We can overcome financially. Proverbs 10.22 says, The blessing of the Lord, it make it rich with no painful toiling. The blessing of the Lord, make it rich with no painful toiling. From now on, we've overcome financially. Ladies and gentlemen, I think it's third John that says, uh, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. So God wants us to prosper. God will not put money in the Bible if he did not want us to prosper. God said in regards to Isaac, let's look at the book of Genesis chapter 26. Isaac in the book of Genesis 26. Genesis chapter 26. Please open your Bibles to it. Genesis 26, I'm there. Verse 12, then Isaac sowed in the land and received in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. Ladies and gentlemen, good news. Money is good. Tell your neighbor, money is good. <laughs> it is the love of money that is bad. Money will reflect well in your life in Jesus' name. God can help us to experience victory financially. I was on Instagram. I saw one man walking out. He's a very rich man in Nigeria. The gym that he was in, that gym looked like a parlor or living room. It looked so nice at the office. Ah! One person put on the comment, say, put your hand on your head and say, I will, I will be rich in Jesus' name. <laughs> Money is good. See, don't let anybody deceive that money is bad. They are, they, are, they, are, they are lying to you. With money, you can build churches. With money, you can sponsor people to school. With money, you can build universities. 
With money, you can create a scholarship fund. With money, you can pay people's healthcare bills. With money, you can feed the poor. Thank you. She put it well. That's, that's, that's actually the person I saw. Uh, so that's the person I, I, the person said, put your hand on your head and say, ah, I'll be rich. That gym looked like a parlor. I, I said, this is the first gym I've seen that looked very enticing. That will make me want to work out. God can give you victory financially. For those that are struggling financially, for those that are in debt, for those that are looking at their finances, looking at their bank account and wondering, like, God, where will my deliverance come? I decree and declare that the angel of God that brings money, the angel of God that brings promotion, we cause money to come to you now in Jesus' name. Let's do something. I've heard this, and I want us to do it. Say, money, come to me now. Say it. Say it. Money, come to me now. You know, money has ears. Money. Come to me now. See my hand. Money, come to me now. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Emotionally, God can give you the victory. You are struggling with depression. Leroy Thompson, thank you, Sister Maywa. You are struggling with oppression. You are struggling with doubt. God is saying to you and me that you can experience victory emotionally. Spiritually, you can experience victory. You can experience victory spiritually. You can grow in leaps and bounds. We are going to see some of this as we go forward. Spiritually, you can experience great and mighty victory. You know, Ezekiel said that, you know, if you remember that, that scripture, you know, when the water came, it was ankle length, it was knee length, it was waist length, and after a while, it overflowed. There's a place where you enjoy the milk of the world, the meat of the world. God is saying to you and me that we can grow spiritually. I told God this past week that I want to come to a point where miracles, signs, and wonders begin to happen through me. Where millions and billions are saved. I'm saying that now. God can help you to grow spiritually. God can give you victory spiritually. It also means that the enemy is oppressing you. You have victory over every demonic oppression. The Bible says in Isaiah 49, no weapon from the gate shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against us in judgment, we condemn them in the name of Jesus. If you're having terrible nightmares, demonic dreams, you are eating in the dream, people are attacking you, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, you experience spiritual victory in Jesus' name. Say it loud, amen. So you can experience victory spiritually. Multiple demonic patterns in the family, curses you can overcome spiritually in the name of Jesus. And you know that the spiritual determines everything in the physical. Anything you see physically manifesting has a spiritual backing. So until you deal with the spiritual aspect of things, you will not see the physical manifestation. So in victory, you must overcome spiritually to really enjoy victory maritally, to enjoy victory financially, to enjoy victory emotionally. You need to overcome spiritually. May you overcome in the name of Jesus. Romans 8. Let's put our eyes on Romans 8 quickly. Romans 8. Romans chapter 8. And it says, in let's start from verse Five. It says, for they that are after the flesh, Romans 8 verse 5, do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be, to be, but, to be, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. Verse 9, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. But if so be the spirit of God, dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. The spiritual determines the physical. Somebody had a dream, and that dream is manifesting the physical. Ah, or you have a dream, and it looks so real. The spiritual determines the physical. So from now on, for those that are dealing with nightmares, that are dealing with multiple demonic oppression, that are dealing with spiritual stagnancy, that are dealing with not lack of vigor, lack of a prayer life, lack of a fasting life. May the fire of God envelop you in the name of Jesus. May the fire of God blow against that spiritual lack of desicality in the name of Jesus. Blow against every spiritual stagnancy in the name of Jesus. Blow against every foul spirit, every attack of the enemy, every demonic dream, every demonic vision in the name of Jesus, every demonic pronouncement. In the name of Jesus. Pray and say, Father, say in next 30 seconds, 30 seconds, I overcome spiritually in Jesus' name. Pray that prayer. Say, Father, pray it. I overcome spiritually. 
Father, pray the next 30 seconds. I overcome spiritually. Begin to pray. Father, I overcome spiritually in the name of Jesus. I overcome spiritually in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen and amen. The next thing mentally you can overcome, you are not a dullard. I will need to keep more. And that man is a man of God. Keep more. Man. Woo! He is a man of God. God can increase you so much that your mental capabilities increase. Mentally, you can grasp things. Mentally, you can understand things. May God increase wisdom in our lives in Jesus' name. Luke 2 52. Jesus grew in wisdom. In wisdom. I'm just pensando on that wisdom. And in stature, of course, in favor with God and man. God can give you victory mentally for those that have been failing, failing the job interview, failing the visa interview, failing in life. May God give you victory in Jesus' name. May God enlarge your mental capacity in the name of Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, God can increase you mentally. Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. I'm saying God can give you great understanding. God can give you understanding beyond your teachers. Even David said in the book of Psalms, he said, I understand more than, my, more than the ancients because I keep your precepts. I understand more than my teachers. God can make you a guru in your field. May God make you the best in Jesus' name. May God make me too the best in the name of Jesus. I know they say that you are not great until your gift helps you to stand before great men and women. Until you stand before kings and queens, you are not great. So for everyone here in your career, you will so much blossom that you'll be the top in your field in Jesus' name. You will be the best in your field. As a consultant, they will pay you so much money that you will not be able to explain in the name of Jesus. May God increase you mentally. And for those that are mentally capable, and you are not seeing the results in your finances, may God send you help in Jesus' name. There are many people here. You have the mental capabilities. You have the mental capacity. And you are not seeing the results. May God send you results in Jesus' name. May you begin to perform exploits in the name of Jesus. Mentally increase in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Some scriptures on victory. Deuteronomy 20 verse 4. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies. To give you the victory. May God fight against our enemies, even over PPC, and give us the victory in Jesus' name. Psalm 98 verse 1. Oh, sing unto, unto the Lord a new song, for he had done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm had gotten him the victory. Of course, Isaiah 50, 25 verse 8. He will swallow up death in victory for those that have lost a loved one, and they, those loved ones are genuinely saved. Don't be sad. God has told us in Isaiah 25 verse 8, he said he will swallow up death in what? In victory. You have lost somebody, you have lost a loved one, and you are feeling sad, you are feeling glum. He will swallow up death in victory. See, he said, oh, death, where is the ice thing? What? I, mean, I don't like talking about death, but God is saying to you and me here that he will swallow up death. He will wipe away tears from our eyes. For those that have been crying, may God wipe away tears from your eyes in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. He will take away shame and reproach in Jesus' name. And of course, the last one, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Now, thanks be unto God. Thanks be unto God. Thanks be unto God. Who caused us to triumph in Christ and make it manifest the savour of his knowledge by us in every place. Amen. Now, look at the wall of Jericho. In the book of Joshua 6, 1 to 27, this is our text for today. You can see that the Lord told Joshua. He said, Joshua, or Joshua, excuse me, go and fight against these people. Now, when God gives you an instruction, wait for the strategy. Tell your neighbor, when God gives you an instruction, wait for what? The strategy. Wait for the strategy. God gave Joshua an instruction. Go against Jericho. He said, I've given Jericho into your hands. Do you know some people, when they hear the first part of this, look at the verse there. And the Lord said unto to Joshua, see, I have given Jericho into your hand. They will not stand up from there and start running and say, ah, thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. I have the victory. And they will not come against problems. They say, I thought God told me that I have the victory. I thought God told me that Jericho is in my hand. They did not wait for verse 3, verse 4, and verse 5. We are too quick to leave the presence of God without strategy. God gave Joshua strategy. He said, I have given Jericho into your hand. See, Jericho was a fortress. See, if Jericho was a prison, nobody would be able to escape. The walls were so thick that Rahab had her house on the wall. Ladies and gentlemen, the wall was so massive. I mean, thinking about how high that wall was and thick the way that wall was, you can build a house on the wall. That was a fortress that was impregnable. But God gave Joshua a concept, march around that place six, for six days. And on the seventh day, shout. That did not make any sense. How can you ask somebody to march around the wall of Jericho? Jericho, where there's oppression. Jericho that has, has posed and has shown resistance. And God is telling that person to march around the wall of Jericho. It don't make any sense. But when you obey God and you serve him, God will give you what I call strategy. Strategy. Tell your neighbor, get strategy. That's the first thing you see here to get victory. God gave Joshua strategy. And when God gives you strategy, it may not make sense. Let it make faith. It may not make sense. Let it make what? Faith. When God gives you strategy, it may not make sense. Let it make faith. Let me give you an example. Some months ago, we had a project. In my family, we had a project. And I've saved up money for that project. I've saved up money. That money running into some big amount. Just in case of anything. And God told me. So a man of God reached out to me and said, please, we need cameras in our church. Can you buy it? I will pay you back. <laughs> I knew. <laughs> uh, for those that work in technical departments in church, you will know that cameras are expensive. Ladies and gentlemen, just the mega pictures of some cameras can cost more than cars. There are some cameras that cost one million dollars. Oh, cameras are expensive, man. <laughs> so God told me, He said this thing: use the money that you have used to save, use it. I said, what? If not that, I, you know, you hear God. You say, get behind me, devil. Use that money that you have saved up to buy it. And don't collect any money back. I say, oh, no, 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 no. To cut the long story short, we did it. And I thank God I did. When God gives you instruction, he will give you strategy. In that strategy lies your victory. If you stop here tonight, you have gained something. You need strategy. When God says, oh, I will bless you. You are going to be the head and not the tail. Thank you, daddy. What is the strategy for being the head, God? Tell me. Wait until you get strategy from God. That is the secret to victory. Strategy. Oh, God tells you. This is your wife. You are going to marry her. Don't say, ah, thank you, Jesus. I just go, wait. God said, you are going to, ah, no, no. You have missed it. God, if you have said, this is my wife, what is the strategy of getting her? What do I need to say to her? By the way, go and talk to her too. If you have spoken to me, talk to her yourself. Strategy. Tell your neighbor strategy. In your victory lies, in, in your strategy lies your victory. In your strategy lies your victory. In your, put it on the comments. Please post on the comment now on the chat. In my strategy, divine strategy lies my victory. May God give us total and complete victory in Jesus' name. If they had gone against the wall of Jericho with their physical strength, they would have been defeated. They would not even be able to enter because the gate was straightly shut. Read the book of Joshua chapter 6. They will not. They can't enter that place. The walls are high. So it takes a divine hand to move the needle. It takes a divine hand to defeat Jericho. And it came by a shout of praise. Now, let's do something crazy. Wherever you are, you are going to shout one loud hallelujah. So any wall of Jericho in your life, that wall of Jericho that has been standing against you, that wall of Jericho, either in finances, in marriage, in ministry, you are going to shout now. I'm going to do my own shout because I need victory. You are going to shout. As you shout this hallelujah, you are going to experience victory in Jesus' name. Are you ready? Once you ready, go. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! 
<laughs> Hallelujah! In that shout of hallelujah, every wall of Jericho that has been standing against you, that wall that has refused to fall, that wall of stagnancy, that wall of incompetence, that wall of delay, that embargo has been moved out of the way in Jesus' name. By the shout of hallelujah, your victory is assured. Your victory is guaranteed in Jesus' name. You will share testimony before this time next week in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. God did not move without consulting. Joshua did not move without consulting God. Joshua obeyed God's instructions. Act and behave like you are already victorious. The second strategy to victory is to act and behave like you are already victorious. Dress like you are where you want to be. Think and act like where you want to be. See, <laughs> let me give an example. Please don't think I'm, I'm boasting in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. <laughs> I, I get to fly sometimes. And anytime I fly, it's good to fly in the first class section. Why? There's more space. You can relax, you can sleep. The food is better. <laughs> That's why I can say it. But it's not like that. Anytime I I used to, so when I would do that, I would put my seat because I used to fly like maybe economy or premium select or all those things, you know, comfort plus. Before it was just economy at the back back, then, you know, you start moving small. But anytime I'm there, I would look at that first class. I would say, by God's grace, I want to sit in this first class. I would start acting like it. There was one day I was flying somewhere. I know it was a night flight. So there were some seats in first class. So I sneaked out of my, <laughs> of my seat. And I went and sat down in first class and I laid down and I enjoyed myself until one flat and then I caught me. I asked me to go back to my seat. But I told myself, I said, by God's grace, one day I will fly this first class, man. I will. So I was looking to buy a ticket. First class, then private jet too. Thank you. Private jet, private jet. That one is another one. Let's just give that one another day. Private jet. I don't know if I give. Let us say this way: Just act and behave like where you want to be. If you are trusting God to marry, begin to act like a married woman. I don't know how to say it. <laughs> you might say either find a wife, either find a what? A wife, not a single woman. That means that you're a wife before you marry. Act and behave like where you want to be. Dress and talk like where you want to be. Act like where you want to be. Think like where you want to be. Behave like it. Let me tell you the truth, ladies and gentlemen. God is saying to you and me that you cannot experience victory without talking it and speaking it. I'm going out of myself. You, you have to behave like where you want to be. Dress like it. You know, there was one time when I was trusting God for a job and I think I went to my mom's business and the way I was looking, I was looking haggard, all my beard was out. I was acting. My mom was like, please go and get a haircut. I'm like, forget the job. I'm applying for a job. She said, ah, no, don't act like your situation. Don't behave like your present condition. Go and get a haircut, shave. Don't look haggard. Don't look act. See, act and behave. Think like where you want to be. If you want to be a millionaire, begin to think like a millionaire. Begin to have dreams of a millionaire. Begin to see. Nobody can pay you to dream. Nobody can take away your dream. My dream is my dream. Your dream is your dream. Act like it. If you want to travel abroad. Begin to think it. See yourself there. You can even do Photoshop. Put pictures of Photoshop. Put yourself in that place. In London, in the UK, in, in France, in, in America, New York, California, Florida, Texas. Put yourself there. Canada, Toronto. Put yourself. Act like it. Behave like it. Think like it. May God help us. In you. If you can even get foreign currency, if you can manage even have some, put it in your pocket. Begin to look at it. I'll begin to spend this money. I'll begin to spend dollars. If you are tired of spending local, unless you are in Nigeria, you don't start spending Naira. Start thinking in dollars. Even if you can get one dollar, put it in your pocket. Be looking at one dollar. If you want a million dollars, you get the point. Think, see it, grab it, and as you do that, the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Let's move because of time. We might have to do part two later. The other book that experienced victory, Jehoshaphat, by the power of praise, he experienced victory. And Judah means praise. Judah, that's the name. It means praise. God granted Judah. You know, Jehoshaphat was the, was the king of Judah. 
God granted them victory by the power of his praise, of their praise. Look at verse 22. And when they began singing and praising, the Lord sent set ambushes against the sons of Ammon, Moab, and Manseah, who had come against Judah, so that they were struck down. May God strike or struck or defeat all your enemies in Jesus' name. All those who are opening their mouth laughing at you, all those who are incensed against you by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the fire of God, may, may God himself send ambushment against them in Jesus' name. Amen. I say that for myself too. Amen and amen. God granted Judah victory by the... So praise is important. Hezekiah, a king came and told them. He said, don't look at Hezekiah. We have gone to other kingdoms and we have defeated them and their gods. Their gods could not say them. Who are you? That's the king of Assyria. Who are you people? I will defeat you. He kept boasting and boasting against the, 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 the kingdom that Hezekiah ruled. Hezekiah went and cried to God. He said, Father, please help me. Look at verse 20. But Hezekiah the king and the prophet Isaiah, king of Amos, prayed about this and cried out to heaven for help. And the Lord sent an angel who destroyed every brave warrior, commander, and officer in the camp of the king of Assyria. So the king returned to his own land in shame. And when he entered the house or the temple of his God, some of his own children killed him there with the sword. What am I trying to say to you, ladies and gentlemen? God will send angels to go ahead of you to bring your victory in Jesus' name. May your enemies be defeated by their own loins. You get my point? Those that did not expect to attack them, may God use those people to attack them in Jesus' name and defeat them in Jesus' name. See, God has different strategies to defeating enemies. If you think you don't have enemies, you are, you are joking. You are a joker. If you think you don't have enemies, ladies and gentlemen, you are, oh man. Even people in your own household are your enemies. A man, a deep... <laughs> We're not about enemies today. Please don't think, some people are saying, why is it not my enemy, enemy? Ladies and gentlemen, many times we are not expressing, expressing victory because of demonic enemies. Opposing enemies. Useless and demonic tongues. May God shut the mouth of every demonic utterance against your life in the name of Jesus. May God shut the tongue of your enemies in Jesus' name. May fire consume them in the name of Jesus. Amen. People that are speaking against you are your God. May God send angels, warring angels, to attack and defeat them in Jesus' name. As the guy, the king, was going through a problem, but God sent an angel. And you can see that yeah, God hears the cry of his children. Don't think that your prayers are not being answered, ladies and gentlemen. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man or woman availeth much. The Bible says, submit yourself unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee. Book of James. God is saying to you and me, your prayers are going to be answered. In this situation, we are going to pray. And I assure you that your prayers will be answered in Jesus' name. David and Goliath. David defeated Goliath with a sling and a rock. Does that make any sense? Someone that is almost 10 feet tall, or I don't know how many feet tall, a rock, stone. I don't know. Someone has, when I, mean, I was growing up, and I grew up in Nigeria, and I don't know if someone has thrown stone at you before in primary school or secondary school. That stone is very painful, though. It will bring out one big knot in your head or something, but it does not kill. <laughs> I, know. I know it has happened to me before. Somebody threw stone at me. But by a rock, Goliath was defeated. The victory that you are going to experience today will mark a defining moment in your life. You know that when David defeated Goliath, he became a national hero. This victory you are going to you are about to experience in this period, it will bring about a defining moment in your life and my own life too, in Jesus' name. Amen. I think we will stop here because of time. We will stop here. So we are going to look at this next week. Why we may not be flying in victory? Why? What are the reasons why we are not flying in victory? May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's just pray and say, Father, help me. Pray that prayer quickly. Say, Father, help me. Help me, Lord. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Father, to enjoy the victory that you have for me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If you are backsliding, you are yet to be born again. If you are believing God, you are not saved. Say, Father, have mercy on me. Forgive me. Wash me in your precious blood. Take my life and do something with it. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. 
and I decree and declare that you will experience multiple victories in Jesus' name. The victory of God over your life will be massive, starting from this week in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you very much. To the next person, please. Amen. Glory to